Friends, I'm Henry Kuto, your host and narrator, and thank you so much for joining me for another Wednesday of some spooky on the weekly. I hope you're having a very good day. I am because here in Ohio, in scenic Dayton, Ohio, we are getting some real fall weather vibes right now. The high, I believe, is uh, about 60 degrees, or maybe it was 55 degrees, and I'm I'm enjoying it. It's time for some sweater weather. It's time for Halloween, of course, but here at Weekly Spooky, we make it like Halloween every single week, and next week will be our 50th episode, and our year anniversary will be on Halloween, because our first episode ever was aired on Halloween. So, I thank you guys so much for joining us, we've had so many new listeners, Um, and I want to take a second to say... Make sure to go to weeklyspooky.com, and if you love the show, give us a little bit of support, whether it's just sending us an email at weeklyspooky at gmail.com, submitting a short story if you'd like, or maybe buying a book. We have the new book called Campfire Tales to Tell in the Dark, which features many of your favorite Weekly Spooky authors, or... You could join Patreon because my Patreon, the Patreon that supports Weekly Spooky, is at its best in October. Because that's when you get spooky short films, exclusive short films, exclusive photo shoots with beautiful models, and some of them are being very, very creepy, as well as exclusives galore. So please go to weeklyspooky.com, check out everything we have available, I would really appreciate it. I can't believe we're almost to a year of doing the show, I couldn't be happier, but this week's story is nice, it's simple, it's creepy, and it's a little Halloween-y, which is great because in the month of October... Every story will be related to Halloween, ending with our bonus episode on Halloween Day. So let's get to that story right now, and I'll be back afterward to chat with you a little bit more. But for now, let's get creepy. Boxed in by Morgan Moore. It was an average day in the small town of Xenia. The weather was warm and humid. In the sky, the sun was just beginning to set bathing the small town in a mix of blue, orange, and pink light. Two boys, both in their mid-teens, walked down one of the bike paths, holding gas station slushies. They walked and sipped until they reached the town bike hub and moved over to a shaded area for a bit of rest. Jeez, it's hot today. No kidding. I feel sticky and grimy, too. Definitely gonna need to wash up when I get home. Well, then we should get going. They started down the paved path, but they soon stopped when confronted by a diverging pathway. The path wasn't paved like the rest of the trail they were on. Rather, this part of it led off into trees and bushes. It almost looked like a jungle to the boys. What is this, Kyle? Oh, it's just this path. It always creeps me out, Kyle replied, his voice soft, but his words were heavy and hung in the air between the two. Kyle peered down the path, but to Daniel it looked like any other part of the land surrounding the city. Dirty and overgrown with wildlife, the ground covered with dead leaves and trash. Normal everyday Xenia. What about this is creepy? Daniel asked. Kyle turned his head away from the path to look at his friend. You've never heard about Patty Short Daniel? Kyle asked. Who? Daniel responded. Kyle chuckled a little bit. Yeah... I guess that would make sense. How could you have heard of it with you only having lived here for a few months now? He was right. Daniel had moved to Xenia in March, and while his dad was quick to get comfortable in the town due to his job, he and his mother had mostly just been at home when not running errands. Daniel had only met Kyle since they lived on the same street, his parents electing not to have him start in a local school since the school year was almost over. As such, Daniel hadn't really interacted with anybody else his own age. Kyle took a loud sip from his slushy. Well, 
It's hard to say how much of it is true. I only heard it from my friend's older brother, but it is really something messed up. Then why bring it up? Daniel questioned before taking a sip from his own cup. Because you asked about why that path freaked me out. Aren't you a little curious? Or are you just scared? Kyle replied, his tone still the same soft and heavy mix, but it gained a bit of its normalcy when he questioned the bravery of his friend. Well, if you stop to tell me, then you might as well finish the story. Besides, I'm not scared, Daniel told Kyle. All right, all right. Don't say I didn't warn you, Kyle responded before taking another sip. The two boys looked at each other and then towards the path. There was this girl named Patty Short. My friend's brother and her went to the same school together when they were about our age. Anyways, I guess she started to, uh, develop early, if you know what I mean. And she started getting attention from a lot of people. Well, I guess she started to lean into it and became popular. Like, mega popular with everybody. Boys especially. So, she starts to date a lot of boys, and I don't mean seriously date, just go out with them and mess around. Time goes on, and she eventually found somebody she liked liked liked. Things got intense, and while she seemed to be really happy, there were some who were totally jealous. Well, one boy in particular really didn't take kindly to the idea that this girl he was head over heels for was now unavailable, and this really pissed him off royally, and he began stalking her, staying in the distance and trying not to be seen by her everywhere she went. Really freaky stuff. Just before school let out for the year, Patty vanishes. Some people say they saw her around town. Some say they saw her leave town one night on the bike path. But nobody knows for certain. She just disappeared. Now, my friend's brother said he knew the truth. That the boy who would follow her saw her walking one night down here and somehow got her to go down that path. They walked on and came to an abandoned house and Patty got talked into going inside. Things didn't go as planned, and when Patty tried to get away from the psycho, he knocked her out, stuffed her in a rainwater barrel, and buried her in the backyard. But she wasn't dead. Well, he kept her alive down there with just the tiniest hole for air and whatever food and water he brought her. She was now completely his. Kyle finished and took another loud sip. Daniel, however, stood in silence. Stunned, horrified silence. He had gone pale, and goosebumps popped out all over his arms and legs, and his expression, pure terror. You... you can't be serious, Daniel finally spoke out. I am. I mean, as serious as I can be. It's an urban legend, after all, or some crap like that, Kyle replied nonchalantly. There was a silence between the two amplifying the growing cricket song as the sun sunk low in the sky. So, what happened? Daniel asked. What do you mean? Like, did they find her? Oh, I mean, obviously they tried to find her, but some people say she was dead, or that her family had found her and kept it a secret, moved away. Most believe she may still be alive in that barrel, waiting for her boyfriend to find her, Kyle explained. What about the boy? Did they catch him? Daniel questioned. Nope. Everybody knew it was him, but I guess the cops could never pin it on him. Silence once more fell between the two boys. Daniel occasionally took small sips from his drink, his stomach feeling uneasy due to Kyle's story. It couldn't be true, could it? The story he had just heard was too horrific. Yeah, bad things happen to kids, but he just couldn't wrap his head around this one. Want to go down there? Kyle asked suddenly. What? Daniel responded, startled. You want to go down the path? See for ourselves if the story is true or not. Daniel looked on in disbelief. But I thought you were creeped out by it. Why do you want to go? Kyle chuckled a little bit. Yeah, but you know what they say. You gotta face your fears. Are you too scared to go down there? He asked Daniel, teasingly. Daniel gave his friend a scowl and started down the path without him. Kyle chuckled again and started down the path as well. The duo walked through the trees and overgrowth for a while, 
batting away at mosquitoes. By this point, the light was scarce, but there was enough to see where they were going. Minutes passed, and Daniel was beginning to think the story was simply made up, and this uneventful walk through the overgrown weeds of Xenia wasn't helping. But after one final stretch of bushes, the boys found themselves standing before a dilapidated house surrounded by a half-standing fence and piles of trash. But, most menacing of all, were the blue plastic rain water barrels that stood at various locations in the yard. Daniel couldn't believe his eyes. Everything Kyle described in the story was here, and then some. Jesus, he muttered, the slushy in his hand dropping to the ground. It's true. Everything is true, Kyle said flatly. The two boys looked at each other, and in a move spurred by adrenaline and youthful stupidity, began wandering the property. They poked their heads into some of the barrels only to find them filled with brackish water. They looked at the house in unison. What do you think? Want to go check it out? Kyle asked his friend. Daniel looked at his friend and then again at the building. He couldn't believe that Kyle wanted to go in. This was the guy who said he was afraid of the path to begin with. Well? Kyle asked again. Daniel found himself unable to speak. On the one hand, he was scared utterly shitless and wanted nothing to do with this horror show. But, and he hated to admit this, he was curious. He had already gone this far. Why not go just a little bit more? His eyes fell on the garage attached to the house. The garage. I say, let's check out the garage. Daniel responded sternly. All right, it's your call. Lead the way, Kyle replied. Daniel gulped. Of course Kyle would make him go first. He had been egging him on for the majority of the day. As much as he wanted to leave, he had told himself he simply had to close this chapter. He had to have the knowledge of if the story was true. The young man began to move towards the garage, slowly, his heart pounding faster and faster with each step. When he reached the garage, Daniel found himself unable to reach out and open the door. His fear paralyzed him as his heart began to feel like it was going to burst out of his body. Standing there, he could feel every inch of his body tensing up and sweating bullets. He forced himself to throw an arm forward and open the door with a fury. Daniel walked inside and looked around. The floor was unpaved, only dirt and some weeds covered the surface. Besides some broken shelves and trash, nothing else was present. No girls in barrels or maniac kids, just good old neglect. Daniel sighed and scolded himself for being such a scaredy cat. He turned around to leave and stopped in his tracks. In a corner by the door was a chunk of earth that had been dug up. Thunderous heart pounding became the soundtrack to Daniel's own private horror film, one he was living in. His brain told him to run away, but his body didn't listen and unbelievably moved towards the hole. When he got to the hole, he peered into the darkness. Inside was a wooden box, half covered with dirt and looking just as decayed as the vast majority of the garage and yard. But that didn't catch his eyes the most. No, that dubious honor would go to the puncture holes in the box and a rectangular cutout near the upper edge of the box through which Daniel saw two cold eyes. Dead eyes. Daniel backed away quickly, his breathing becoming ragged. His mind raced in every direction. It was true. Everything Kyle had told him was true. Daniel finally gained enough of his faculties to move towards the door. Wham! Daniel found himself on the ground, face down. Blood began to spill from the back and side of his head. Standing over him was Kyle, a shovel gripped in his hand. I'm sorry, Dan, but I have to. You should have just said no to coming down here. Shame. I liked you. I really did. That's kind of the problem, though. We're starting school soon, and well, I just know you're going to be popular with everybody, and that would mean we wouldn't have any time together. And we can't have that. So here we are. But don't worry. I'll visit you as often as possible. Besides, you'll have company when I'm not around. Kyle smiled, tossed the shovel down, and exited the room. The young man exited the garage as Daniel laid there, blood pulling around his body. His eyes were wide open as his body twitched. After a minute or two, 
Kyle returned, dragging one of the barrels with him. He laid the barrel down on its side, and with some effort and a few well-placed kicks, managed to stuff Daniel inside. Kyle righted the barrel, walked over to the door and exited again as the sun set, and night took over. (laughs) Spooky vibes to get your fall started just right, and I want to thank Morgan Moore so much for that story, and you can read another story by Morgan if you check out the book Campfire Stories to Tell in the Dark, which is available at weeklyspooky.com. You can find the link, or you can go to henflix.com and buy yourself a copy signed, and there's even an audiobook, you know, which would be the kind of thing you like if you like this kind of thing, the show. So, uh, but man, uh, I do enjoy a short, simple, creepy story, especially involving kids. I love getting into that mindset of when you were a kid and things were so scary. Ah, I love that feeling. Love that feeling. I might have to watch an old episode of Goosebumps or something uh, today after we're done recording this episode. So anyway, uh, I'm going to get out of here, but uh, I just wanted to remind you guys, check out weeklyspooky.com and please consider supporting the Patreon because, oh my goodness, do we have so many cool things coming to the Patreon in October. And I want to thank our podcast boosters, people who contribute just a little extra to get their names shouted out in the show. And that's Karen Wiemet, Jason Lindbergh, Jack Kerr, Jeff Hilton, Craig Cohen, Rob Fields, and Kevin Fry. Appreciate you guys very, very much. You are who keep the show going. Uh, I'm still kind of mind blown that we're at about a year into the show. We're almost there. That's wild to me. So I know the only way, the only proper way to ring in a year of weekly spooky is with five terrifying tales related to Halloween so that every single week you're getting a little more ready for Halloween. And that's what we're going to be doing starting next week. So please tell a friend, tell a neighbor, post about this on social media and wash your hands as well. And I will see you guys next week right here. But until then, I will talk at you later. Thank you for listening. Make sure to find your way back next week. But for now, you are safe. Trust me. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha.